G'day guys, Maddie from Extreme Auto Caravan and Camping with you again today. Bit of a tech talk. I uh, got a little bit of an opportunity here while we're doing some programming and the weather's a bit inclement. So um, these little subjects here and talk topics are things that are brought up in quite a few emails. This one in particular is on the lithium upgrade, or whether it be a simple off-grid um, setup or a full off-grid setup, or something simple as just upgrading to lithium to you know, keep the compressor fridge going longer, or just free camping longer because you want to upgrade to lithium. This is all to do with battery monitoring and the drop-in lithium replacement. So, I'm, as you guys, you know, I'm not affiliated with any brands. I'm not sponsored. I'm not pushed by, I don't have anyone in my pocket, I'm not in anyone's pocket, and I will stay like that. And the reason being is because then I get an unbiased opinion on products. And I don't do product reviews, but I just know what works and what I like using because it works. When you upgrade to lithium and you are sold a drop-in replacement lithium, it doesn't matter what brand it is, all right? The, fact are, the facts are the facts. All lithium, lithium iron phosphate, or it's, it's a lithium battery. A lithium battery requires a certain charge profile to charge the battery efficiently and correctly, and here's why. Look up a discharge curve of any regular lithium battery, drop-in lithium battery, whether it's prismatic or cylindrical. The, the discharge curve is pretty much the same. It's pretty flat. That discharge curve, right, this is gonna get techie on you guys here. Let's call it zero to 100% state of charge, right? You'll see it start, it'll ramp up, it goes up pretty quick, it's pretty flat, and then right at the top of the charge, and so nearly 100% full, it flicks up real quick. The BMS shuts off, because it senses, you know, the cell's starting to jump past 3.65, it shuts off. It, it might hold it there for maybe half hour, an hour, depending on your absorb time, it's all to do with your charger and then it's, it's off. It will not accept any more charge, controlled by your BMS. Here's where the problem comes in. That discharge curve, call it 20% to 80%, if you were to chop that back, cut and paste, it's very flat. It, if you were to look at that discharge curve as a voltage reference, it's 13, 1, 13, 2 all the way. So between 20% state of charge and 80% state of charge, your drop-in lithium battery is sitting on 13.2. Think of that number for a minute, 13.2. So if you go to bed and you look at your voltmeter and it says 13.2, how do you know where you are in that scale? How do you know you're not at 21 or 22%? How do you know you're not at 40 or 45? You don't know. All you know is voltage. That's the problem. Now, think of that for a minute. Voltage, 13.2. If you've got a system sitting there, you've just dropped in this beautiful lithium battery, you've just done an upgrade, you've sold a couple of lithium batteries, you've dropped them in, and you have not changed your chargers to suit. Chargers in the form of AC, when you're plugging the mains, solar, right, your solar controller, DC to DC for vehicle, your three chargers. If you have not changed those chargers to suit a lithium battery, here's what happens. You plug in mains power, we'll talk about the mains charger dropped in your lithium battery. The charger kicks in. It sees this 13.2, it kicks in. The voltage instantly shoots up pretty quick. The charger sees that voltage, right, because it's moved up to 13.4, 13.5, and it says to itself, well, this battery is nearly full. I'm going to back off. Because an AGM charge profile, specifically an AGM charge profile, during its absorption stage, will taper off the current. And look it up. Look up most charge profiles for an AGM profile. You see the absorption, it'll, it'll taper off. So as the voltage rises, that current tapers off. To charge a lithium battery, it is woe to go. All right, it is stop, go, and then off. It is, it's pretty much one for one. You give it an amp, it'll take an amp. What that means is it'll go bulk, and then it goes, it might hold that little state, last stage of absorb for however long you set it for, but then it's off. There's no float with lithium. They might call it float, but it's actually not. It doesn't trickle charge. It, it's like a storage mode. 
it'll drop back to 13.5. So it'll go 14.2, 14.4 for a lithium. It'll ramp all the way up, hold it there for a little bit of time, and then fall back to 13.5. So think about that. You plug into mains, you've got this AGM charger, it sees 13.2, it ramps up quick, 13.4, 13.5, it will say to itself, hang on, this battery's charging really quickly because it's so efficient, I'm gonna back off, and it does. Proven time and time again, go back through my videos, I think we did a Jayco a while back where I showed it. You plug the mains in, I think it was the older Jayco with the uh, C-Tech charger, um, with the AGM uh, profile inbuilt you'll see the amperage goes up real quickly to our 15, but then it drops back to five. And then it goes back to three and two. The lithium battery was brand new, straight out the box. It wasn't 100% full, I know that. It was more like 40 to 50% state of charge, that's how they come. It needed a charge. You know, it needed a good 70 to 80 amp hours. Now, see the problem? So, on mains, look, it's gonna charge, but it's gonna take forever. But it's not accurate. Now, let's move to solo. If that was solo, if you were free camping guys, and you drop this lithium battery in and you do not change the charge profile on your solar controller to suit the lithium battery, you know, bulk and then storage mode, the same thing will happen. The same charge profile exists. When you move to those, those absorb stages, the current tapers off. And this has been proven time and time again. My phone rings crazy with it. Pardon me. Emails come in. Just upgraded lithium out, it's supposed to be better. Why am I not seeing the results? It's actually worse. It's because of that charge profile. Yes, it's more efficient at charging. You might see that current initially, but if you wake up the next day and you're supposed to see all this wattage come in and you're wondering why, well, that's why. It is in those higher voltages, so the charge controller thinks the battery's full when it's not. Same with the DC charger. Um, a classic one was recently, there was a um, the old Red Arc uh, not the D model, a previous model. Great charger, but he upgraded the lithium but kept his DC charger in situ. It was a 40 amp Red Arc. And it did the 40 amps to begin with, I watched it. It was like 10, 15 minutes of 40, but then it quickly ramped down. It ramped down and it ramped down. It was putting in five or six amps, it was bugger all, and then it shut down completely. Now, <clears throat> the batteries were nowhere near full. It wasn't until I woke up the batteries, I had to put a big load on the batteries to drop that voltage, the charger decided to wake up. Oh, um, the voltage has dropped, I better compensate. Then the 40 ramped back up. As soon as I took that load off, the voltage jumped up again. The DC charger sensed that and backed off. The DC charger was doing its job. Nothing wrong with the DC charger. The problem is you've now changed the chemistry of the battery. You've now changed the resistance of what the charger is charging, all right? The internal resistance on the lithium battery is very, very low. What that means is it generally will accept what you give it. All right, that's how it works. It, it loves being charged. That's why there's such an efficient battery at charging. Whereas an AGM or a lead acid battery has a, a bit higher resistance, which is why you need that sort of later stages of, of um, absorption and the tapering of the amps off, just to let that battery absorb and soak all of that extra power coming through there. That's the nature of um, how the battery charges. So the same bears true for all of your chargers, guys. So when you do do a drop-in lithium replacement, please reassess your charging system. If you find you are having issues, then you change it. At the very, very least, your objective to obviously put lithium batteries in is to give you more free camping time, not for when you're on mains power. So I've got a rule. If you change the lithium, these are, these are the rules. Definitely change your solar controller. That's the first thing you should change. Put a, a lithium compatible solar controller in that can at least charge those batteries properly. Secondly is your DC to DC charging for the vehicle. Put that in, because then you're, going, you're guaranteed to charge those batteries from your Anderson system. Lastly, not you don't have to do it, but lastly is the mains charger. Usually when you're on mains power, we're there for days on end, or we're there for, we're not there for an hour or two. You know, when you plug into mains, you're usually there for a long time. So it's not vital that it takes forever to charge. Um, <clears throat> however, from a you know, standpoint of view, if you're gonna design the system from scratch, you're gonna do it. But it's not like, a, if you're on a budget and you, if you had to go, well, look, Matt, it's blown out. Now I need a DC charger, now I need a solar controller. Um, do I have to put a mains in? No, you don't have to. It's better to, but you don't have to. All right? It's, it's not a do or die thing. So just remember that, guys. 
drop in lithium replacements, please change your charges. You, you'll thank me for it, you'll thank yourself for it, it'll, it'll make all of the difference. You're not gonna pull the, um, pull the lithiums out and put agiums back in, you, you're not gonna go backwards. You're always gonna go forwards. Having that lithium profile will save you time. It'll give you the battery capacity that's rated on the batteries. Um, and probably another thing I should touch base on with these uh, drop-in lithium batteries is when you over-discharge them, what happens to the lithium battery is it shuts down. The BMS will sense all of its depletion, all of that discharge is gone, you've, you've used up all the capacity, and what does it do? Turns off. Turns off, quite literally. The FETs, the MOSFETs that are on the BMS will shut down, right? It'll kill the power to the terminals. You will pretty much have zero voltage on those terminals. Now, when you've got zero voltage, that means anything connected to those batteries is, is going to show that. So if you've got a voltmeter, battery monitor, the light, you'll have nothing. So for all you guys that have experienced a BMS shutdown, you know what I'm talking about. You'll go to bed at 13.2, because you don't have a you know, proper battery monitor, and you'll wake up and everything's off. And you'll be like, what's going on? Well, you've experienced that low voltage shutdown from the BMS, unless you've got something else in place, or another fault. But that low voltage shutdown, or you know, full depletion of the battery, comes from that over discharge. It's supposed to do that. It's designed to do that. Here's the kicker. An AGM charger, mains solar and DC-DC, right? An AGM charger sees that voltage, and it thinks there's a fault, a dropped cell, a problem with the system, because it's not, it's not inbuilt in that profile to wake it up. It doesn't need to. A lithium battery needs to be woken up. Woken up means a little bit of voltage, you know, 12 volts and above, needs to be placed across the terminals to wake up the BMS. Once the BMS is woken up, it generally will stay latched on. So once there's voltage, once voltage is applied to the terminals on the battery, the AGM charges will now see that voltage and go, oh, we've got voltage again, start charging. Solar mains DC to DC, same bears true. So just remember that if you over discharge a lithium battery, you will need to wake it up. You can use a little jump pack, you can jump start from a vehicle, whatever. As long as you've got a 12 volt direct source to wake up your batteries, you can do that. You will have to do that with an AGM charger. So you can imagine what happens when you're free camping. It's not readily available. Not many people have this ability to jump start their caravan's lithium batteries because they've just updated to them. If you have a lithium profile inbuilt in your charge sources, so if you, if you upgrade your solar controller, if you upgrade your DC to DC charger and your mains, these three items now have the ability to wake up your lithium battery because it's inbuilt, it's made for a lithium battery. So that would mean if you wake up with a fully discharged lithium battery and you're in the bush and you've done all your charges, well, plug your vehicle in, it's gonna charge. The DC charger will wake up, it knows that um, it'll look at the battery voltage and it puts a pulse down the line. It'll quickly latch on and then latch off. It'll wake up the BMS. Once it's woken up, it'll then latch on and start charging. Same with solar. As the sun rises, if you've got no voltage on the lithium battery because it's shut down, as that sun rises, the solar, the solar charger looks at the lithium battery and it'll put power on it. And once the BMS wakes up, same deal. It'll latch on, it'll see the voltage and it'll start ramping up. Same with mains. Same deal, guys. So. Just remember that, lithium upgrades are great. Love them. To do them properly, it costs money. And that's where it's at, to do it properly. So hopefully that's a bit of information for you guys on the lithium battery. Um, I think I've touched on all the subjects when it comes to lithium batteries, just with simple upgrades. So yeah, give us a like and subscribe. Tell me what you think. If you've got any questions, hit us up. Oh look, we're getting some sun. <laughs> I can do some solar testing on this off-grid setup I've just done, but hit us up guys and hopefully that answers some questions that we've been given heaps of. So thank you.